All right, we're still, I'm still admitting a bunch of people. We've got a big group already today, which is awesome to see. Welcome everyone. Um, all right. Oh my gosh, there's so many people joining. Gosh, I could usually blur my messy background. What is going <laughs> on here? If you click the little um, arrow by stop video, uh -huh. there's an option to blur your background. Oh, and I have a virtual background. Hold on. Okay, cool. Oh, it's not showing. Hmm, that's weird. All right. Well, I'm still letting people in. There's still a bunch of people okay. joining us, which is awesome to see. Um, I think maybe Jessica is having some technical problems, but that's okay. We can wait for her. Um, I'm here. Oh, nice. Okay, perfect. I'm just, I couldn't get my Wi-Fi to connect inside, so I'm sitting in my truck, so oh. sorry. <laughs> oh my gosh, well, we appreciate You're technology you. masters. Yes. yes. Oh. <laughs> Well, we appreciate everyone being here. So let's let's get started. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Broker Connect. My name's Kelly Galloway. I do marketing here at Arrive. We're so glad that you all could join us today. If you don't know this session, Broker Connect, this is an interactive bi-weekly meeting uh, with top brokers and Arrive users where you can learn best practices, pick up some tips, and just hear how other brokers are using the system. Um, I'm here today with Jessica Wells and Teresa Timms. I'm super excited to have them here, but before I turn it over to introduce themselves and before we open it up for questions, I just have a few pieces of business to take care of. So for those of you who maybe don't know, we offer a ton of weekly learning opportunities and these are all completely free. So we have two sessions of new user training every Wednesday. We have office hours with our product experts on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, we have an onboarding and Q&A session. This is offered three times per week. You don't even have to be an Arrive user to join this one. Uh, we have an AE training session. So if you want your AEs to be well-versed in this platform, if you want them to be better partners to you, send them to that training. Um, and then we have Arrive University every other Friday. This is where you can learn all about the updates and enhancements made to the platform. And then of course we have this session every other Friday as well. Um, and all of these events can be found on our website, arrive.com slash events. You can sign up for all of them there as well. All right, now I'm done talking. We can get into that, the good stuff, the reason why you all are here. Jessica and Teresa, welcome. Thank you so much Thank for joining you. us today. Thanks for having me. Yeah. yeah, this is fun. I don't think I've Zoomed with so many people before and been the person to talk. <laughs> well, we are so happy and grateful that you're here. So, Thank so you. Teresa, since you're, since you're already chatting, why don't you kick us off by introducing yourself and your brokerage and then we'll kick it over to Jessica to do the same. Great. Thank you. My name is Teresa Timms. I'm president of TDR Mortgage. I'm located in Southern California and serve the entire California market. And I've been a proud broker for 22 years of my 24 year mortgage career. And I am so grateful to arrive and aim for all of the contributions that you all have made to our channel. I mean, it's made a huge difference in how I do business and Hi. As a point, Calix Point user for 22 years, I am so, so happy to be done with them. Like I'm almost all the way done. I'm porting over my final files, but uh, good riddance point. So, <laughs> hi. Awesome. Jessica, how about you? Um, so my name is Jessica Wells. I'm based out of Olympia, Washington. Um, I started Clear Choice Mortgage in 2012 with a partner and took over in 2015. I was a processor prior to that. I've been in the industry for 19 years in April. So I am also very happy to be done with Calix Point. So, <laughs> Well, we're happy to have you both. And thank you again for being here. 
Um, and yeah, now we can kind of get started. I want to remind everyone on the call here. This is this is your call, really. Um, you know, this is very off the cuff session. We're going to take your questions and talk through ideas. And um, so I just want to encourage everyone to take themselves off mute and jump right in with your questions. If your microphone doesn't work, or maybe you are uncomfortable um, taking yourself off mute and asking your question to the entire group, you can drop your question in the chat. That's totally fine we can get to them there um but we do love the interaction so feel free to to come chat with us that's why we're all here so who has a question that they would like to kick it off with today i can certainly kick it off with a few questions but i think we have almost 80 people on this uh meeting right now so let's get to your questions can i just say something really fast Go for i it. feel like i represent the majority of the arrive people you know there are big companies looking to make the change you know people with huge teams i'm a small broker shop i have a handful of people that work at my company and i started last june, may or june transitioning and now we are 100 percent transitioned so for what it's worth to let you guys know about my arrive experience Teresa, can you maybe talk about your transition experience and what was helpful for you? Or, you know, I know you're a big fan of our office hours and things like that. So you can maybe talk about the things that helped well, you. I mean, we're we are taught delegation as leaders and managers. So I like, I, I had started, you know, when it very first started and I remember like CASA at some meeting in 2018 or maybe even 17 talking about this amazing system. And I was like one of the first people that got to do it. And I think it was early 19 and I was just like, oh, this is not for me. And I didn't want to like sound negative. I really didn't voice my opinion very loudly, but I was just like, okay, I'm gonna step back to stupid point. And then I think I tried it again in the middle of, early 2020 and it still wasn't my cup of tea <clears throat> so then i had i had um looked at other los systems and i just it seemed like i would need somebody to manage it and program it like it was above my pay grade because i'm doing this myself and you know my my assistant are doing it and then I had heard so many good things about Arrive. And then you guys, you you're, you leveled up your support. Like the support was, you know, leveled up. And I'm like, okay, I had just, what is that one that everybody is doing? Lending pad or um, is that it? Lending pad. Yeah, I did that. I was just like, no. So then I'm like, okay, I gave it to my, my uh, partner, Jocelyn. And she's like really technical. Like she's just so good. And so she started doing it. And it was about 30 days and I'm like, so, you know, what do you think? And, you know, I had used it a little bit too. She liked it, but I felt like she couldn't, this is something that I couldn't delegate to her all the way. So I'm like, okay, I, I need to, I need to pick up the pace here, get all the way involved and get immersed in it. And it was very challenging at first. I found it challenging because when you're used to doing something a certain way for 24 years, that's a lot of learned, you know, behave like it was, it's just different. And the reason it's different is because it's so good and has so many things that you can tweak and modify. So I struggled a little bit and then I figured out how to find help. And the thing that helped me the most was I would work in the system and then write down all my questions and then I would hop into office hours. Office hours was the most powerful thing for me. And I just powered through it. And I probably went through like a month and a half of office hours. And, and then, then here I am talking about it on one of your guys' Zoom calls. Love it. Okay, so you found office hours to be very helpful. So just to reiterate, office hours are every Tuesday and Thursday. You can sign up for office hours at arrive.com slash events. And this is totally free. Um, so Teresa, someone in the chat has a question for you. Sure. Um, they said, I, they want to know more about how you transferred your loan data from point to arrive. So can you kind of talk about, well, how you um, that? funny thing about that is <clears throat> point, you almost cannot get a hold of them. No, you can't get a hold of them. So I think it was like 20, is that my phone? What? 
Okay, I'm not sure how to silence that. Um, can you guys hear that? I can't hear anything. Oh, you can't? Oh, okay, good. Um, so we spent over 60 days trying to contact Point because we knew we had to cancel. And then what I was going to do is, you know, you have, I don't know, I started storing Point data back from like 2002 or 2004, I think. And so that all that data is very important to me. And then when I really thought about it, I was like, okay, really, is 2002 data really important, important to you? And I had joined some of these meetings and asked other users. So basically what you have to do, you have to contact Point. You have to um, get, so I had Calix Point, the, the server version. So I have to get with ABT, sign a contract. I have to pay them $330 to um, download all of my files. I'm going to, I'm going to download them on one location in my office. And then I had to pay $330 to Calix Point just so that I can transition off their server system to just the desktop system. So I'm going to keep one, um, one Calix Point to kind of store all of my stuff in. And then what I discovered with Arrive is that it only holds three to four years of data. Is that right? I, I can't remember when I've asked before. It's three to five years or four or five years of data, of files. Three Vince, years on core, five years on pro, I believe is what, is what Vince, we- Okay. Yeah, started. so I have pro. And then there was a discussion about, well, how long do you really need to- you know, keep those files. I'm just in the habit of keeping them forever. So I'm just going to like business as usual, download them all. And we are doing that. Like, like I think Wednesday and Thursday, we had signed all the paperwork to start that, but it was just really difficult because you cannot get a hold of point people. And we had to email them, wait for them to call back. And it was, it was a big hot mess, but we, I would suggest doing that early uh, because it takes, it takes a while to get hold of point. Okay, gotcha. We have a question for both of you in the chat here. So are either one of you using a CRM? And if so, what is that CRM? I'm using daily AI currently. Um, it does do Zapier integration. So with the if you get the plan that you can export stuff, you can get it set up through Zapier to not sync everything, but most everything goes into it. I'm not a huge fan of daily AI, so I'm not recommending it, but it does work. Gotcha. I use Surefire and for me, it's been the best of the worst. <laughs> and, and I've been with them like since 16 or 17. Currently though, I want to get Arrive all situated. So my next thing that I'll be working on is um, a new CRM. And I'm looking at Bonzo because of all the integrations and they're- That's the one I'm looking at too is Bonzo. Yeah, they, they're, they're, it's just very, very helpful and it's very affordable. and. With Surefire, I'm not like a legacy partner. You know, I'm not a big company. I'm a small broker. So the only support I get is email support, if that. And, um, you know, I, I don't know. So, yeah, I don't have anything. I have zero integration set up with Surefire except via lead pops where my, my data goes in. Gotcha. And um, Jessica, it sounds like you're you're a pro user, right? You mentioned you mentioned Zapier. Um, yep. Teresa, I'm not sure if you're a pro user as well, but someone in the in the comments here is asking um, what you feel the advantages are of Arrive Pro. I think that one of the big ones is the Zapier integrations, and then I we get with the Pro we get the eSign capability too, which has been really great. So I could drop DocuSign like a bad habit, and that was great. So. I'm, those are the two biggest things I use for Arrive Pro. I mean, the price difference is minuscule in the scheme of things. What is it like a fifteen or ten dollar difference? So why not go Pro? Honestly, I forget why I signed up for Pro, but I did it. Uh, you know what I did at first when I when I first started, I just had one seat, and we were the smallest paid thing. But I think we had access to everything. We were because you guys were just rolling out Pro. So I just started with just one seat and me and my partner shared that seat so we could get familiar with everything. And then after about 45 days or 30 days, when actually when I started hopping in being like, okay, how does this all work? Let me set up you know, the corporate settings and everything. I was like, oh yeah, we need another seat and we need to go pro. And I forget why. <laughs> so I'm a terrible person to ask about what, what are the advantages of pro. No worries. 
no worries. Uh, but no, I, I think those those are what we hear most is definitely the e sign capabilities is a huge mm -hmm. one. Um, and then and then Zapier as well and, and having those integrations. So I think those are those are good things to touch upon. Um, so I do want to remind everyone. So if you want to take yourself off mute, if you have questions for these folks, if you just want to open up a question to the group, please unmute yourself and feel free to engage. These are they're both nice, nice folks here. So we're not going to uh, put your head off with any questions. Jessica, when did you start um, using Arrive? So I switched over, what was it, March 1st, when Calix wouldn't do the 3.4 back in 2020. And I just said, nope, I'm done today. And we switched like <laughs> that day, basically. Yeah, you were just like, I'm getting my done. files over. And anything that came in after March 1st, we closed through Arrive. And then the other stuff, we piddle closed it through Point until it was all done. And now I'm completely done with Point. So it's uh, almost three years now, I guess. That's, wow, yeah. so you've been using it for a very long time. Yeah, I love it. It's amazing. It's so much easier and everybody can use it. And with the online application, so people can fill it all out. I've made custom questions in there, then that my task list does custom things. Like if it says that they have child support that they pay, then it asks for proof of the divorce decree and child support order. And if it says they receive it, then it asks for the divorce decree and proof of six months of receipt. So I have all kinds of custom questions in there. I've set up some custom docs too that automatically get e-signed. So whenever somebody fills out an application, they fill out a form about the opt-out pre-screen stuff. So that way, by the time it gets to me, I would know that they're already on the do not call list and the opt-out pre-screen. So I don't have to worry about them getting as many trigger leads. Yeah, that's the part that's really cool is that it's customizable and you don't need to be like a computer programmer or I like your job doesn't need to be IT person for the whole company to be able to do all of those things. Did you do a lot of that yourself or did you have your people do it? Yeah, I set it all up myself. So I've gone mm -hmm. in and tweaked a couple of them. Like when forbearance was really big, one of the questions in there was, are you in forbearance? So that way to ask for all of that information. And then I just keep changing it. it Arrive keeps evolving and getting better every time it evolves. So I yeah, just keep I, using it as the best I, I can. I had the Flowify Flowify uh, point of sale. And when I changed over to the, again, you know, you're used to this. I had that on three or four years. And then um, the arrive point of sale, I'm obsessed with, like, I really, really like the arrive point of sale. I feel like it's, it's a good system. Yeah, it's super easy to use. And I haven't had very many issues with borrowers not being able to get in. I was using like blink before, and I would end up with duplicates and all kinds of weird problems in blink. So I much prefer arrive over any other software I've tried. Awesome. Does uh, anybody know when the uh, workflow rules is going to be released for us to be able to utilize? I'd love to get some Harish on this. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> referring to Harish. And I'm sorry, I hopped, I hopped on late here, so I might have missed this discussion already. Hi, Harish. No, it has not been discussed. Uh, Harish, you're muted. Okay, sorry for that. So first of all, thank you, Teresa and Jessica for doing this. We really well, appreciate yeah. your support. And, and, and I want to give a shout out to Jessica. She's very process oriented. You know, early on in 21, she walked me through the Trello setup and a lot of rules and conditions you see today in Arrive are inspired by some of the you know, knowledge we got from her, her early on. So thank you for that, Jessica. So I did want to mention that. So going yeah, back to right. actual workflow rules, it, it is a little tricky. You know, we have a lot of volume and uh, our current priority is stabilization. So I would say uh, that, so we have trackers, which is kind of tracking, uh, you know, more customizations are planned for a pro plan later this year, but we don't have a date by which I, I don't want to make a statement and then not stand by that. So I, I would say Q3, if you're looking at when when this might be available, it, it is under works like to let you set up templates and then, you know, what tasks get generated when and who gets assigned and, so all, all that, uh, but it is fairly complex. You know, we have more than 12,000 users and sure. uh, we, we process lots and lots of loans. So how do we migrate all that data? So it, it is a fairly complex project, but it is under works. I would say if you're looking for timeline, it'll be Q3, Q4 of this year, but not, not earlier than that. So, but, but great okay. question. No, oh, thank you. I appreciate the realistic answer. Look um, forward to it being released eventually. Yeah. So someone in the chat asked if either one of you use the Realtor portal. 
I haven't. Um, yeah, I haven't. I looked into it. I think there's a cost associated with it or something, right? I, I do co-branding on my CRM, but I have not. Um, again, I'm like six months deep into this. So we are just getting everything set up. And I like the, um, <clears throat> I, we are doing like customized letters and customized things in the point of sale. And we're going, there's a lot of automations too that you can set up for like notifications to all the parties in the system. But as far as the exact realtor integration, no. I've used it a little bit. I have a couple of realtor partners that'll go in there and use it. Um, and I do use the links that are specific to the realtors each. And then I give them access to do their pre the pre-approval so they can change them. I just find that none of my realtors want to do it themselves yeah. anyway. So it's just, it's there and it's cool. And I've showed a bunch of people how to get in and use it, but I don't think that very many of my realtors use it at all. It's, no, interesting it's easier that, for them to make a phone call to you. Yeah, yeah. and I think, um, so we've heard that before. We, we definitely have heard that before, but something that we also hear is that um, while people may not use it, it's a good selling point. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Kind of opens, opens the door to a conversation or something like that. Yeah, I definitely agree about that because it does attract people and I show it to them all, like the realtor meetings I go to and stuff like that. I will show them that I have that ability. They just never use it. Yep, I hear you. Jessica, Some things yeah. never change. <laughs> I have a follow-up question for you on that, Jessica, really quick. Um, how do you, if you said you let your agents change the pre-approval if they want to, not that they do, but they have that capability. How do you handle if the pre-approval has to have a contingency on it to sell the house that they currently own? Um, I just don't give them access to that pre-approval letter then. So that way I can do a hand type. I can edit it every time I send it out. So it says that on there because I don't know that there's a way to make that form. Like you're, you can change it each time you send it, but I don't know. And someone can correct me from arrive. I don't think you can change it and then have them go in and keep printing it with that condition on there. Wouldn't that problem be cured though, by the fact that the real estate contract is written up contingent, therefore if their house sells, they will qualify. I don't know. I, yeah. I, I never spoke to contingencies ever on any of my, my loan approvals. I do a lot up here with um, like contingent on them selling their house. So I do see that quite a bit. Um, but I just change each letter every time I do it. Is all, I don't know if there's a better way to do it than that. All right. So we have a couple of questions here. Um, Jeffrey asks, can individual users make custom rules if under a company account, or does that need to be done at the company level? Yes, they can. I found this out this other day. So each user can create that. You can have company level rules, and then you have um, user level rules too. I think that changed last week, didn't it? It just like recently changed. We did. I don't know. I just found it out though. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's a really, really cool thing because before they couldn't. So um, that's a really nice feature to have. Awesome. And then um, Terry asks, is there a prequal letter that she can send instead of a pre-approval? Do you guys send prequal letters? Well, you can custom, you can create a custom form for anything. Like we have our own company custom forms in there that get sent out like automatically. So you can make your own what do you call it? Prequal template and send that out. Yeah, easily. Yeah, I just don't think that you'd be able to send it with the pre approval button. You would have to just go create that custom document and use the template each time, but it would do it for you easily, very easily. Um, question. A, oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, my name is Anthony. I'm in Delaware. I've only been in Arrive for about a month now. We came from Encompass into Arrive. And I was curious, has anyone tried importing previous non 3.4 files into Arrive yet? I have oh. not. Okay. You mean like importing 3.2 files? Yeah, so like, because of the way Encompass is, if I do a 3.4 for like a loan before the 1003 change, it doesn't bring in the full addresses. 
It only yeah, brings so in the city and the state. So when I try to import of, like a 3.2 file. All of my old Calyx files were all 3.2 that I imported. And I don't know, I know that it was going to go away. So did you get, did Arrive take away the ability to import 3.2? No, I, I can import it, but it doesn't let me import them as a close, as a funded loan. It only lets me create an application. So I didn't, yeah, I was afraid. I had it was to go in and manually change my, them all. I had to go in and manually change the status of all of them to funded for anybody that I imported um, because I don't think the 3.2 has the funded tags or whatever in the import. Yeah, I can, yeah, okay, so that is, yeah, yeah only the 3.4 lets you do closed or, or funded. It says active loan or closed loan on the 3.4 tab. The 3.2 tab doesn't give you that option. I was more nervous it was going to screw up, you know, when we go to do our yeah, your pipeline reports and stuff. Yeah. So I don't there know. There were a lot of inconsistencies for us. So we just closed out our pipeline in point versus having to download and upload all of the year's files. So we're going to start fresh in January. Okay. We we thought about that. So I, I kept one seat at, at Encompass just so we have it. But yeah. some of our loan authors kind of wanted all their stuff in there. So hopefully yeah, when rates do drop, they'll, they have one complete database and we're not going back and forth between both systems. So this, this is Harish again, that, that's a good catch, Anthony. So it looks like 3.2, we, we, we probably forgot doing that. So this is very new. You know, when you import files, this, this toggle for active or closed loan is like a couple of months old, but we will we can add that. Uh, I didn't know there are still three two files out there where users are uploading that since it is now a year more than a year. So, but we can add that same, you know, toggle. The system will recognize that as a closed loan. Yeah. Uh, and if that is helpful, but that's that's good feedback. So no, appreciate. yeah, I appreciate it because some of my old ones I tried importing as a three point four. I can get them in there, but then I have to manually go and add the address. When close it, yes, you know, and then it'll change the dates. Like you know, it'll move. So yes, we can we can look into. How do we, I, I didn't know that there are users out there who are still struggling with 3.2 files, but it's a good good feedback. So I appreciate yeah. that. So. All right, thank you. All right, we have a question in the chat about call reports. Um, so everyone says call reports with Arrive are easier. Do you agree? How do you find this process? They're so much easier. I had a spreadsheet that I would export out of point and manually key in all the data. When you go into Arrive, you just choose what state and what if you want, what you want, and it will give you the actual form that you can upload straight into the web, the NMLS website. It's super, super easy. It takes me where it used to take me probably two or three hours to do my um, pipelines. It only takes maybe 25 minutes now. I think the only issue I've had is um, with non-QM files, um, I've had to make sure that they're all assigned properly so that way they don't go on the wrong lines of the MCR report. Other than that, it's really easy. It's just a couple of clicks on the pipeline report. Cool. All right, so someone else asked, if I wanna send employment history of borrower and co-borrower for early underwriting before lead convert to loan, is it possible? I don't use leads at all in there. I only use the loans tab, so I have no idea. Okay. Yeah, the new, the lead feature is something that we as loan officers are very, very used to, right? Because we get people in and we don't move them over to our regular pipeline until a certain point till we have all, the, till we know we can do the loan mostly, right? Till we send it to processing. So the lead feature we have not used but Harish, th that's going to be later this month that we'll be able to use that, right? I'm so it, excited. It is available today. It, it is not very well structured, like in terms of questions being asked. So yes, by, by either end of the month or early next month, uh, the lead feature is being completely redone. So you'll be able to you know, use it like you use loans and move leads into loan, collect documents in lead, uh, you know, tag them, classify them. So there is a lot going on on the leads. And we have looked at many, you know, lead management systems. Again, we are not trying to replace a CRM. If you have one, uh, continue to use that. But yes, we, we will be giving a built-in lead management uh, very quickly here in the next few weeks, uh, which will be, you know, like you said, if you're not sure, put it in the lead. If you are sure, move it to a prospect and then work on the file. And data will flow through between these two entities seamlessly. So... 
That was a, a hard thing for our office to kind of put our heads around. We are not used to having every single lead that comes in be in our pipeline report. Mm -hmm. So when, you know, we had a call and, you know, we would send them the loan app and then they would just never fill it out, you know, it clogged up our pipeline. So then we would have to archive it versus having it come in as a, in, as a lead and be able to leave it there and later, you know, export that, you know, into our database or whatever we want to do with all of those leads. I, I'm really excited about that feature that's coming out. Yeah, absolutely. Besides not clogging up your working pipelines and mm -hmm. you're not seeing something, you know, every time, even though you can set up filters, but it, it is annoying to look at something we are not sure of as you're working through your day. Uh, we, we can do a lot more. So there'll be, you know, point of sale forms, which you can publish on your website. And, you know, people can fill them up, simple questions like, what are you looking to do? Give me your contact. So that would trigger a lead. So you can create these simple forms or simple questions, uh, you know, all natively in Arai, which can then be published online on your website to collect uh, lead data, you know, and later this year, you will be able to collect leads from other channels. You know, Facebook leads comes up all the time. You you advertise, how do you capture that? So, so yes, we will be working on leads as we announced earlier. Uh, rest of the year that's a pretty big uh, undertaking given how the markets are so we we do want to make it easy to you know, to capture them you know nurture them and and then convert them when they are ready so so that's some sexy stuff right there <laughs> i'm excited <laughs> um so somebody asked about zapier so i just want to clarify zapier isn't a crm it's like kind of the tool that helps two systems talk to one another or integrate with each other. Um, and it helps with automations and things like that. So it's not, it's not a CRM. We're talking about kind of the interim software that helps you connect your CRM with Arrive. So I just wanted to clarify that. I also want to mention, like, the, the, just to extend this question on on CRMs and arrive and how how everything plays in. The number one request, at least I get from users, is lack of uh, why do you use a CRM? Is lack of SMS or tech support? Like, you know, these days everybody is on their cell phone and you have a milestone change. So, so that's another big project this year. Like, how do we how do we give you, you know, text capabilities or SMS capabilities at least for milestones and critical events? Where you can keep all the parties in the in the loop, and that would be another kind of enhancement as we as we do release lead, lead management. So, so, but yeah, the leads are primarily storing early triggers or some someone you are not sure of, and then how can you communicate to them using text and SMS? That's kind of how we are thinking about this uh, this this year. So, but yeah, more more will come as we as we announce concrete plans. I, I would say next month, month after, like what exactly. Uh, the solution would look like so yeah um okay cool so i just we've had a lot of new people join with the last few minutes so i just want to put this out here again feel free to unmute yourself this is very um participation oriented so we want you guys to unmute yourselves and ask questions or again drop those questions in the chat hi i have a question um, so I'm very new to Arrive because I'm very new to mortgaging in general. I'm a loan processor, and I've noticed that when we create new files in Arrive, our entire LO team gets added to each of those files. So my LO team in Arrive is set to all of our LOs, me, my boss, everyone. And so my LOs have complained that they only want... Um, like themselves and me on each of the files. And I know that when you go into the file, you can go to your LO team and like, you know, remove them and add them after the file is made, but they are finding it annoying that they have to do that every time. Is there a way for me to, um, to alter that like automated process of it already like adding to the files, all of those people? Is there a way for me to set it to, only add like the primary and then we can add people later yeah you definitely should be able to do that because i have some of my loan officers that don't have a team at all so maybe you just need to unassociate them from the team i'm not sure what the best practice is there but i know you can have it so it doesn't automatically do it yeah i have no idea how to fix a lot of like things that are automated on arrive um yeah. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say like the office hours for me was the best thing. You just keep all of your questions, log in. And I would usually be the first one to log in and the last one out um, because I have a lot of questions. So for me, I, my advice to you would be, I don't know the answer to that, but I guarantee you, you could get help in office hours. Okay, I was say, thank you. Yeah, I was gonna say the exact same thing as Teresa. Office hours is a great place to ask that question. Um, one of our product experts will be able to, to show you and to help you. I could show you that in 60 uh -huh. seconds if we were sharing screens on this call, but we're not. So um, I second that. And if you come to office hours, we'll we'll get that fixed for you. It's definitely doable. Yes, this is a good office hours question. And we'll, we'll this will encourage you to join that. So this and is definitely cool doable. About, like office hours, sometimes there's only like two or three people in there. So then you're like going, <laughs> okay, what else do I want to ask? And it's like one-on-one, yeah. -on -one, you know, really cool training. And Tara, um, Tara and Vincent are super fun. And I... I like missed office hours. Like a lot of times when, like there was a month where I felt like, oh my gosh, I'm really on top of this. I don't even need office hours. And then I'd be like, oh, I just want to log in to say hi to Tara. And <laughs> see, what's, see how the weather is out in her neck of the woods. <laughs> okay, that's helpful. Cause I, I do have a lot of like very vague, more basic questions than what the rest of you are talking about. So I'll check that out. Thank you. Yeah, and I would say too, like the, what Teresa said is is exactly true. It is a little hidden gem because there aren't a ton of people normally who join those. So it almost is like, you know, you can have a private little session um, because not many people take advantage of those office hours. So, well, yeah. even if you don't think that you need it. So I've been logging in the last uh, week and I just have it on in the background because some of the things that come up on those calls are like, oh, I didn't know that, or, oh, I mean, there really are a lot of features, you know, that I am not- tricks and things. Using. Yeah. Because Jessica has been a user think? for three years, three years now? What is, what is yeah. it, two, three? Yeah, and I'm like really a six month user. And so just there's so many little things, like even some of the things that she just now said, I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. Hey, my name is uh, Krishna here. Uh, been, I've been using a Calyx and then uh, lending pad and move to Arrive three months back. And I can tell uh, the, the Arrive platform compared to lending pad, especially how easy to, uh, easy to use and uh, how easily you can communicate with the borrower and uh, the process of sending the documents and getting it signed, e-signing e instead of you going to the uh, DocuSign or uh, Adobe and all other stuffs, everything keeping it in one place, uh, which makes us more interacting with Arrive. But I wish Arrive had some kind of CRM so that we don't have to go to any other tool and all of them can be done at one place. Trust me, we, we've heard that before. <laughs> we hear you guys. Um, okay. Well thank, well, thank you for your feedback. We appreciate you, Krishna. And I also just want to say there's a lot of things in the chat that are that are kind of um, alluding towards when is Arrive going to do X? When is Arrive going to do this? And I would say it's probably a really good um, time to plug our Arrive University session next week. We're going to talk through a roadmap um, of things coming down the pipeline. So I would definitely highly recommend everyone on this call join, uh, join Arrive University next week at this time, Friday at 1 p.m. Um, that would be a, a good session for you all who are asking about um, things in the pipeline. Not to uh, beat a dead horse, but going back to the lead section, and I won't ask a time frame, but well, they're kind of like uh, you guys mentioned with last week, introducing it. You know, some of us are using this more as a CRM, and I know it's not supposed to be that, but will there be a feature of being able to set reminders within there? Like, it seems like something that would be fairly easy that would be tremendously helpful of, you know, phone call reminder, because right now I, we go and put stuff in out or whatever, but if we, if I saw the notes section, we're going to be able to put, you know, made phone call. I'm just curious if there's going to be the ability to say, need to make phone call 30 days from now or whatever you want. <clears throat> That sounds kind of like something with the workflow that they're getting set up where you can assign tasks and things to people. So I would imagine as that workflow process comes out more, you'd be able to do more with that. But obviously, I'm not sure because it's not a feature that's out yet. 
And I'm upgrading to the pro stuff this weekend. That's my uh, fun weekend plans is playing around, you know, so. I just see what's to come, but I love it. I'm the same thing. When I started with, part of me starting my own brokerage was because of a ride, because I too came from Caleb's Point. When I started like five years ago, I sat down and I came from doing software and consulting sales with ERP and EAM stuff. I sat down to do a mortgage. I was like, oh, what, what is this? 1995 called and they want their software back. And I couldn't <laughs> believe it how like, so many people were doing stuff. And then I started just doing digging. Found this and you know, place out of that, they didn't want to make a change. I was like, right, cool, no more incentive for me to go do this. And here we are. So I love How it. did you hear about us, Austin? Uh, probably in the broker group or the AIM group. Um, you know, I just, I'm all constantly in there reading, trying to learn stuff and whatnot. And I kept seeing it pop up. You know, I'd seen the issues with the first releases, whatever. And then this was just a whole new segment, you know, or a whole new rebranding company, whatever. Uh, so dove in and then, yeah, just the more, I mean, just watching a little bit, but like, this literally is a tool. And like Teresa was saying, a lot of us that are doing it all on our own, like it can't, like, it can't get any easier than this. It, it truly can't. And it's something that <laughs> when I first did my phone application in there, it took me an hour and a half to realize that the whole thing was on these three pages. So that was the use of Calyx where you could, there's no way you could ever figure out Calyx without someone t showing you what to do. And, this system, even without doing the mortgage, you could get in and figure it out and run AUS, whereas Calix is just a dinosaur. And uh, so, yeah, once I did that demo, and I was like, yeah, I got to get on this. And then and we're barely, we've barely started the surface. I was doing, you know, the updates every other week. And as our team grew over the last few months, I haven't been have, had the time. So now I'm going back into the you know, support portal and watching all the prior ones because these updates come there's so many it's almost sometimes hard to keep up but it's great i love it so i just had a meeting with our team yesterday that basically showed them all that i'm like look i need you guys to get in here too and help me because like we barely scratched the surface at the end of the day sure yeah. how long did you adding to adding to what austin said when i joined a brokerage company they told me that i have to use calyx a lot, couple of years back and as soon as i saw open the calyx and i said to who the hell is going to use this system in this current technology grown up and i said within one month i found i had looked google to find a brokerage company who uses a, a windows interface of a low system and then i found a company who uses a lending pad i thought okay lending pad is much much better than calyx and i moved to that team within one month i moved from the brokerage company to another broker company because i cannot stay with there with calyx and doing work in the calyx Ooh. in this age of years gotcha gotcha um krishna how long have you been a, an arrive user or are you I, I am i am in arrive last three months and i work with emmy in my previous company so uh but uh definitely it, it won't i am a technology person i am very good with technology and it didn't take much time for me to uh, judge continue lending pad arrive because lending pad i don't have the flexibility what i had in arrive because yeah. Uh, it's it's very hard to find things in lending paid compared to arrive. And that's where I thought, okay, this is a system that we should be using going forward. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, Krishna and Austin, we're so happy to have you on Team Arrive. Love it. Thank you. Um, okay. What other questions? Does anyone else here want to chime in with some questions? Yes, hi, how are you? My name is Steph. Hi. Um, we've been with Arrive for three or four months, but we're doing the switch between Calyx and Arrive. And Arrive is a much different animal and in a lot of sense towards Calyx. Uh, how I can introduce it to the new team? So how to get your team on board, right? Correct. How did, how did you guys handle that, Jessica and Teresa? Um, I just did a couple meetings. We did the onboarding call as a team. All of us did one day. And then I'm pretty tech savvy. I had a couple loan officers who are older that took a little bit longer to get it all figured out. But even though they were like, this is so much easier than Point because Point is definitely 1995 call and no one can figure out how to do things in there. So um, arrive is way easier to onboard. It really, I was worried that it was going to be harder to do it. 
Um, but it was so simple and self-explanatory that no one had any issues switching over. Yeah, I have received resistance. And so next year, people that don't transition over will charge them an extra processing fee to take it out of their desktop point into Arrive. And I, I just think it's a matter, you know, there's been a lot of stuff happening that end of the year with the market. And so I think a lot of people were focused on other things. And, and this year we're having, you know, get, get togethers and hangouts where we're tackling all of this stuff. And I think it's just a matter of, um, of them getting more business to be, to be uh, con really concerned about it. Steph, Steph, I can say one more thing. If you want to stay in Calix and get age old faster, figuring things out, or you want to move to arrive and make it easy and don't stress on your brain. No, I, I wanted to be on, on uh, Arrive and forget Kirix. Kirix, I, I'm, I'm closing seat by seat. Gotcha. Um, so, Steph, we do have new user training every Wednesday. This is a two-part training, um, and it really is, it's very comprehensive. Um, so definitely would recommend new user training. We have an onboarding and Q&A training as well. And then, of course, office hours would definitely encourage um, your team to join us for those trainings. Okay. You know what I started noticing is that it has been so helpful. You guys are sending out a, an email, weekly email with all of the things on the one email because you guys arrive has so many things like so many trainings and so many this and so many that it's like a lot of stuff to keep track of as a human and so when i, I really started paying attention to those emails and i feel like it's my one place to see everything that's going on yeah yeah, so we do send out a weekly events email. If you're not on our email list, please drop your email in the chat. I will be happy to add you there. We do send out a weekly events email that goes through all of our weekly training events that you can join. Again, these are totally, totally free. Um, and we send some other important emails throughout the week. We do have webinars that go on. Those are pretty awesome. Um, we have a new series that just started, the Arrive Partner Spotlight. Um, We've just got a lot of good stuff going on. So if you want to be on the email list, please drop your email in the chat there. And I will. And I, I found out that because I logged into office hours on Tuesday <laughs> and uh, and then and then they're all, oh, no, that got canceled. And I was like, oh, I didn't see it, but it was in that email. So now I know, OK, I'm going to pay much closer attention to that email every week to be as abreast and updated because, you know, you're on you're on Facebook or you're on here, you're on all these things. And sometimes you miss the notices or whatever, but that to me, that email is now my thing that I'm really going to pay attention to. Yeah. So that's a good point. If we ever have cancellations of things like these events, we will put them in the email. We also put them on our Facebook group. So our Facebook group, um, I know you both are a part of that, Jessica and Teresa, and you're both very active on there, um, but it really is a wealth of information for our users. So if you have basic questions, chances are they're probably, they probably have been asked and answered at least a dozen times in that group. So you can probably save yourself a lot of time by Google or not Googling, but searching for your question um, okay. in that, in that group. Um, and you'll, you'll find a lot of information there. Well, and even if it hasn't been asked, then it's a benefit to everybody else to get that question in there too. And you have mm -hmm. all of us brokers in there that'll jump on and answer it. And Harish is in there all the time. Like you get answers probably quickest besides the chat thing. If you're just on Facebook and someone else is like, oh yeah, this is how you do that. And it yeah. makes it so easy. Yep. Totally agree. And I'm going to drop the link to our Facebook group. Wait, Jessica, no. do you have your loan officers um pay for their system their los i you, pay for you, the whole company i pay for all the seats yeah all right guys we have about 10 minutes left we've gone through a lot of information here today do we have so any other questions um do we have any other questions that we want to go through before we sign off today? I know a lot of information has been covered, but if you have, have any questions, questions you're great. I would say I'm a new broker having come from a retail side for over 20 years. 
Uh, and I looked at different options and I went with Arrive because of the simplicity. And it was somewhat challenging for me, maybe a little frustrating at first, but as I worked through more and more files, I began to appreciate the ease of the system. But I, I just want to say thank you to you guys. The functionality, even since September, that you have added month over month is really, it's a, you've pre created a very powerful system, really, really good, in my opinion, for brokers. Uh, and I just want to compliment you guys. You're, you're really turning this into something uh, quite amazing. So way to go. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for saying that and for uh, being along on the journey with us. We appreciate it. I do want to kind of piggyback on that. Just let you guys know, we uh, just canceled Calyx last week. And uh, when I was talking to Focus IT, they asked where we were going. And I said, well, we've, we've been on a ride. And she said, oh, yeah, I've checked out their website. They, it's really good. And I was like, oh, you might want to go check them out and get a job there. So, <laughs> so they're well aware, too. So. <laughs> I didn't even tell them because I said, oh, I'm cost cutting because I don't know. I thought maybe I would get worse service. I thought maybe they'd feel sorry for me or something. I don't know. I like, I didn't even tell them, but once we're all ported over, I will send them an email about how, you know, they really let us down and I don't understand how they have such a market share and suck so bad. Like, I don't, I don't get it. I agree. I don't understand, but. We don't have to care about them anymore. No, we do not. <laughs> Too funny. Too funny. Um, okay, I am dropping the event the events link in the chat again. So if you're interested in any of our events, whether those are Wednesday new user trainings or office hours on Tuesday and Thursdays or every other event that we have, you can register or find more information at arrive.com slash events. And again, I dropped that link in the chat. Can I say one thing? Um and I know this has been talked about before, but I sometimes struggle with my zaps. And I don't know if Arrive would be interesting in contracting with a company that specializes in Zapier integrations that we all as users could pay a third party. Like I've sought out different companies and it's so expensive. And then I like, I don't know, I just... You know, it's like two hundred dollars an hour, and then I even hired some people, and and the zap broke, and so I don't know. There, I see a lot of zap questions. I would really, really. I know you guys don't do it, but maybe if if you could be so kind to contract with a company that the users could pay. So, I'm just saying. I hear you. Your feedback is noted, Teresa. Thank you. You're not the first person to say it. <laughs> I don't have the answer on that, but, uh, and unfortunately, Harish, Harish ghosted us, so we can't even turn it Oh, over. darn, I thought he was on here. That's why I said <laughs> that. Dang it. I missed it. <laughs> yeah, no, that would be great to have, like, a just a big corporate account type thing where we could just all just zaps. pay them our own, for our own stuff, but at least it's somebody that we know knows how to use Arrive and how to do the zaps because, like, I've done, the zaps got set up by Daily AI, and they know how to do that. So they took out of that part. And then Lead Pops did the zaps for my other stuff. So I've done some zaps to try. I've set one up to put stuff into Trello because I still use Trello. And so I have set up a little bit, but it gets really complicated if you don't know what you're doing. And I'm pretty tech friendly, and it's still too complicated. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, the last zap I did, it started zapping my whole database into my CRM. And I was all, ah! Like there's like oh, no. 300, like, yeah. So <clears throat> I called my partner and I'm like, turn this off. <laughs> undo, 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 undo. Well, we hear you. We hear your feedback and we'll definitely take note of it again. I don't have an exact answer for you, but we hear you. Um, so Jeffrey, I would say if you're having an, an er getting an error on something, it's probably best to either submit a ticket or join office hours and kind of ask your question there and see if you can get the problem solved. You know, we're we're having a an issue with Freddie Mac right now that um, we're it's been an ongoing thing, and we um, so yeah, you just have to like you know we had the issue like three weeks ago, but. We run so much dual AUS in UWM that we haven't kept on top of it. I just think it's something that you just need to task on and stay on top of and 
and do your support tickets and things. Bye, Tara. All right. Well, if there are no more questions, I'm going to do my final call for questions. Last call. If we, if we have gone through a lot. Um, so, and I really appreciate our hosts here, Teresa and Jessica. You two have been awesome in answering everyone's questions and getting the conversation started and going. Um, so we appreciate you so much for being here. You guys don't have to do this. We're not paying you to do this. You did this out of the kindness of your hearts. Wait, I'm not getting paid? What oh, is dude, going I on here? <laughs> I resent that remark. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> Well, regardless, we appreciate you so Thank much you. for being here. You, you guys are busy women and we appreciate you jumping on to answer all of these questions. This is an extremely valuable conversation for us. Um, so again, thank you so much to everyone else on this call here. Thank you for being here. Um, you can catch us back here live for another session of Broker Connect in two weeks. We'll have another pair of awesome guests. And then again, next week, we'll have Arrive University at the same time on Friday. So definitely join that. That's going to be a big session, an important one. Um, so you definitely want to want to join that. Um, but thank you so much for being here. Hopefully, everyone has a great weekend, and we'll see you next time. Shout out Thanks to everybody. Alex and Lori Diaz. I love you guys. Love that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everyone. Good weekend, everybody. All right. Bye.